Good morning, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're at. Today we're going to be talking about Roaming Warrior Leo. I've been getting a lot of questions like, yo D, what you think about him? What you think about him? How come you haven't talked about him yet? So today we're going to drop that. We're going to talk a little bit about what I think about him, how I think he'll be positioned, how you can position him if you want to use him, and we're going to also talk about his mechanic and kind of what he brings to the table. You guys might have heard me talk a little bit about the bomb mechanic and how it could be meta shifting, especially once a specific unit comes out if that hero does come to the fray, uh, but right now I think he does have some utility. But before we get into all of the whys and hows and how nots and all that other jazz, let's look at Roaming Warrior Leo and see exactly what he's all about. All right, so Roaming Warrior Leo was born to a family of scholars. He dreamed of becoming a warrior from a very young age. After his parents disappeared following a raid by the Axe Bandits, he pledged to become stronger and get his revenge. Believing that reforming the rotten world is the only way to become a true warrior, he roams around the world, defeating evil. So as we look at Leo's skill three, his skill three is Go Raku, where he attacks all enemies with Raku with a 90% chance to plant a bomb for two turns. Now, with the Planet Bomb for two turns, for those of you guys who are curious as to just how much damage bombs deal, bombs basically deal 150% of your attack power, and it also ignores 70% of the target's defense. So to give you guys an idea, let's say even without the defense ignore, if you have 3,000 attack, it'll do 150% damage of that 3,000 attack, which will total out to 4,500, a little bit less if we factor in the 30% basically of an enemy's defense. But that's not to say that this third ability can't deal damage on its own without the bombs. So when we look at his third skill multiplier here, it's a 0.8 multiplier and the power of it is 1.1. So what we did using the damage calculator that I talked to you guys about in the other videos, we've already calculated the stats. So at with my Leo at 3,189 attack, with the multiplier 0.8, with 0.1 with attack buff up and enemy defense down and if it's max molded he's hitting for 12,333 on all enemies okay so if you're able to apply the defense break plus the attack buff up he can still deal considerable damage because 12,000 is pretty much killing most lower HP DPS and it's putting a significant dent into any tank. Not only that, but if you happen to land the bomb on your target, then it's basically a ticking time bomb until the bomb goes off to deal another however much damage. So in my case, if I had 3,189 attack, I'm gonna wait for another 4K or so extra damage when that bomb procs. Now the beautiful thing about bomb mechanics is that when the bomb mechanics do pop, it actually stuns the hero and denies a turn for that round. When we look at his skill 2, his skill 2 has a lot of one-shot potential and a ton of utility. And you guys are going to find out why here in just a second. So he fires a shock bomb at an enemy with up to 100% chance to increase skill cooldown by one turn. So what that means is if he attacks with this skill 2, essentially, he will increase the cooldown, meaning that let's say your hero is getting ready to go. And normally you have a four turn cooldown. And before you got ready to use your skill, let's say you were outsped by Roaming Warrior Leo and he hit you with this S2. What that's going to do is it's basically going to make you have to wait another turn before you're able to use this ability. Now, when we look at the skill 2 multiplier, it's actually a 1.2 times 1 multiplier, which lets me know that right out of the gate, it's going to deal some pretty significant damage. So again, we've calculated here, keep in mind that this is going to be a single target attack. But with the same stats that my Leo currently has, with defense down and an ally attack buff up, plus being max skilled, he's hitting for a total of 18,220. So he definitely has some one-shot potential here, especially if you guys are positioning around the defense break. So any type of squishy unit or your average warrior, not bruiser style, he's going to pretty much be able to one-shot with the death break. When we look at the skill one, he just attacks with the slingshot with the chance to decrease attack, which of course is super duper useful. And the damage increases basically by 10% if the enemy is already debuffed. So again, when we look at the multipliers here, I calculated the move multiplier is going to be a one, power multiplier is going to be one, 
all of the same stats against an enemy with a thousand defense and on the scale one with defense break if it's max skilled you're hitting for about 15k so all in all if you guys are looking to potentially max skill this hero he can deal some significant damage but he's going to take some upfront investment if you're going to be positioning leo specifically around the bombs then you're going to want to shoot for a higher attack value so now that you've gotten a general idea of how much damage roaming warrior leo can deal if you decide to max skill this hero let's see let's take a look at him in combat so you guys can see what he looks like in action so for the sake of example today i'm going to be using basar mlr mintha says and i'm also going to be using leo in the back now if you guys are wondering why i'm choosing this team is because i feel like with leo the turn count that you have to wait before his bombs to detonate is a little bit too long. So in order to maximize the efficiency, I feel like he needs to be paired and positioned well with other CC heroes. So that way, by the time the enemy does come around, the bomb is going to detonate and hopefully either finish them off or buy your team another round. So let's look at this now. So here we're going to strip because you're not going to be able to apply harmful effects if you have immunity up on your enemy target. Once we have the strip in place, I'm going to play for the stun so we can play off the two turns. Because what happens is, is once you have the initial stun on, on an enemy and you, let's say you place the bomb on all four heroes, what's going to happen is it's going to force them in a situation where they're going to essentially waste a turn. Let me show you guys what I mean by that. So as you guys can see here, we're going to place the bombs here. Okay. So we have a bomb on Armin. Fortunately, we have beneficial effect block here. So Armin is pretty much useless here. What's going to happen is now you have a bomb effect. ML Ken is going to go. And now that ML Ken went, he wasted one of his turns. So now what's going to happen is any time that either one of these heroes goes, because if you guys look at the C Armin, she has a one turn bomb. ML Ken has a one turn bomb. So their next turn is literally going to be denied. And you'll be able to see how much damage the bomb is going to deal. We're trying not to deal as much damage here. Uh, fortunately, see? So you guys saw that, that there was a 6,000 damage proc when they got a turn. So we'll continue to kind of do a little bit here. Hopefully we don't get the kill here. Okay, so the counter attack we're not worried about. But you guys saw the 6k damage here with no attack buff. Okay, so hopefully we don't kill ML Ken here, which we shouldn't. All right, so, and then what's going to happen is, once ML Ken goes, since he's stunned again, he's just going to detonate himself. <laughs> or oh, we're just going to get a whole bunch of turns. Why your ML Ken so slow? <laughs> I just get the idea. So, as you guys saw, like, with these stats, when the bomb detonated, it's about a third of most heroes' lives in this game. So, if you position well then, of course, he can have a lot of utility and he can deal significant damage, even though you can still kind of position him as a secondary cleaver based on the damage numbers that we saw through the calculator. Let's talk about the flaws of ML Leo. Now, the drawback with ML Leo is that it's not a 100% chance to land a bomb. Now, even though the bomb is a primary mechanic, it's not really one of those things that you'll rely on 100% because it's only a 90% chance to land. So think of it more like I'm going to plant the bomb and get the extra turn for the soul burn and then I'm going to go for the S2 one shot. And then we're going to play around other heroes that also have lockdown, CC, yada, yada, yada. So by the time the, the bomb detonates, we have more stuff that we can do in between and think of the bomb more as an insurance plan. Now, the time, in my opinion, when I think that this will change is when they release a hero that detonates bombs. So let's say if ML Basar detonates all harmful effects or consumes all harmful effects or something like that that are applied to an enemy, then that could be pretty awesome. So say, for instance, Leo puts a bomb, you're stacking heroes with poison or bleed. And let's say if ML Basar, hypothetically here, um, detonates all harmful effects. And if he detonates all the harmful effects, then boom, right? Then you have a situation where you position your Leo, then let's say your ML Basar or something like that, or whoever can detonate bombs in the end, and then you have potential one-shot action. But until then, I think that his third skill is really more of a gimmick, uh, just because it's not really a 100% chance to land. So if it does land, can it be good? Yeah. If your stats are insane? Yeah. If you have hero's position? Yeah. Could it be an OP mechanic? Yeah. But it's going to need a lot of setup, a lot of time, the right heroes, and the right positioning if you're going to rely on the bombs. Now, if you're relying on the cleave with the cooldown on S2, or let's say maybe the cleave here, so you land the AoE death break from like a Champ Zerato or like a Tywin, and you go for like maybe a one shot 
on the problematic units and then whoever's left over you chain into the s2 and you know one shot some and let's say maybe the other heroes that you didn't one shot happen to have bombs on them then there's a lot of stuff that you could play with there but ultimately i think it's going to take a lot of testing and i feel like he's a hero that came out in a way to kind of prepare us for future mechanics that might be coming to the game but all in all i think he could be useful but like i said he's gonna take a lot of work a lot of time if you want this hero to work all in all guys if you guys are in a rush and you guys just want to play with the bomb mechanic you guys are excited you guys want to see what happens then i'd say go for it if you guys are going to build him i recommend building him super high attack so my attack power on him is really low um so if you guys mad imagine you have 4k or 5k attack then the damage could get pretty significant um again you're going to want to maximize his crit rate crit damage not just his attack power even though you're just going to be playing with the bomb damage essentially and that's definitely an option that you could do you kind of want to make sure that you can deal damage initially up front as well especially if he's going to be a primary or secondary cleaver if he's just going to be a secondary cleaver you can kind of just go with more attack high effectiveness so you guys can have a higher chance to land the bomb playing around the bomb mechanic but that's ultimately just going to be the setup for him so you can ensure that he does his job so anyway, guys, hopefully that gave you the information that you guys needed to kind of see what Roman Warrior Leo can do. We looked at his multipliers. We talked a little bit about his positioning. You guys seen him in a sample arena fight in around mid champ. So you guys know exactly what he's capable of and what his future potential could be. If you guys got any questions, comments, concerns, definitely let me know in the comment box below and I'd be happy to assist. And with that being said, we will see you guys in the next video. Peace.